Today we will try to take a look at a newer aspect of dye stuff and that is the toxicity factor. You see all chemicals are not our friends and those chemicals which are not our friends could become a toxin at a particular concentration. So let us try to understand why and how these dye stuffs can become our friend and how they can become a toxin. So trying to understand the toxicity factor of dye stuff, let us take an overview of the textile dyes. Textile dyes from a large group of textile chemicals and comprise over 8000 different compounds with almost 40,000 commercial names. The textile industry utilizes mostly reactive dyes which are used in dyeing cellulose fibers such as cotton and that accounts for about 40 percent of the world fiber production. So that is the kind of volume of chemical dyes that are being used particularly the reactive dyes and then the cotton itself is utilizing about 40 percent. Reactive dyes have good technical characteristics, but they have been found to cause adverse effects on workers in textile factories and into the environment. The toxicity was not caused only by the textile dyes, but uh, by a large number of different textile chemicals. So it is not just the dyes that are toxic, but even the textile processing chemicals are also sometimes not so good for our health as well as for the environment. But nevertheless, let us even try to understand what is it that makes a dye molecule toxic and which are safer to deal with and so on and so forth. As we go along, we must understand that this is a very important aspect because a lot of textile effluent carries these dyes when they run out of the factory. Some observations about synthetic dyes, allergic dermatosis and respiratory diseases are known to be caused by reactive dyes. So now we at least know for conclusion that reactive dyes are little dangerous and they should be used in optimum and that these dyes when left in the effluent should be processed properly. Contact dermatitis and asthma were also studied by Thorin et al. Other researchers have shown textile industry workers exposed to reactive dyes to have changes in their immunoglobin levels. Mutagenicity caused by some textile dyes was also noticed. Walling et al. showed several azo dyes to have genotoxicity. So it not only can create uh, mutagenesis in the DNA material, but it can also alter the gene content in the DNA and RNA that is the nucleic acid of a cytoplasm or a nucleus and therefore these chemicals are more toxic than other chemicals which do not interfere with the cell body. So that is why it needs a special reference. What makes these dyes unsafe? Because clothing comes into prolonged contact with one's skin, toxic chemicals are often absorbed into the skin. especially when one's body is warm and skin pores have opened to allow perspiration. We also know that some individuals have what is known as chemical sensitivity including when exposed to garments of many types and this has been written extensively in the website mentioned here. Symptoms in adults for chemical sensitivity range from skin rashes, headaches, trouble concentrating, nausea, 
diarrhea, fatigue, muscle and joint pain, dizziness, difficulty in breathing, irregular heartbeat and or scissors. Symptoms in children include red cheeks and ears, dark circles under the eyes, hyperactivity and behavior or learning problems. So, it is important to understand what is that makes these dyes so unsafe and they can create such serious health hazards for us. So, therefore, it is important to understand the structure and the toxic nature. Synthetic dyes, dyes are so problematic because the families of chemical compounds that make good dyes are also toxic to humans. Each new synthetic dye developed in is a brand new compound and because it is new, no one knows its risk to human and the environment. Actually that is the problem. The problem does not lie uh, in the dye itself, but because the dye to human relationship has not been worked out, the behavioral pattern of the dye has not been understood properly. That is why a new compound when it is launched in the market has a lot of uh, these uh, uh, unknown facts which need to be actually worked out just like medicines. Medicines there is a lot of study that goes on uh, for animal studies and once the animal studies are proven to be correct then only it is uh, allowed for human consumption. And even on human consumption, a few uh, test uh, human beings are taken and these uh, medicines are administered. Only then when they get positive responses and they feel that there are no negative or toxic effects uh, visual, uh, visually uh, known to the um, person who is actually observing, then it is passed. So, so, nothing like this actually happens with the dyes and therefore, there is a problem because these dyes are completely new compounds and their behavior to human being is not understood and is not known either. Many dyes like amaranth have entered the market. They have subsequently been discovered to be carcinogenic and withdrawn later. The European Union in particular has been proactive in banning dangerous dyes and dyes formulated from toxic chemicals. Although the European Union as well as many other developed countries like US are taking a very proactive role on trying to ban any chemical which shows any kind of toxicity including the dyes, but even then sometimes it is already made its impact into the society. But its drawback to create a dye, see if it is hazardous, then ban it or so. It is uh, you know a very tedious process and by that time the harm is already done, especially since so many dyes are known to be dangerous and carcinogenic. So, how much testing can be done? and who, which dye is being used and how many such dyes are being used on one particular garment and then the sensitivity of the person to person also matters. So, therefore, it is a very tedious task. Ezo dyes are definitely one of the most uh, notorious dyes and they have been banned and that is the reason why they have been studied extensively and some information about their structural detail that what actually makes the azo dye dangerous or toxic will be revealed to you in a while. The chemicals used to produce dyes today are often highly toxic, carcinogenic and even sometimes explosive. The chemical aniline, the basis for a popular group of uh, dyes known as azo dyes especially group 3 A1 and A2 which are considered deadly poison giving off carcinogenic amines and dangerous to work with also being highly flammable. In addition other harmful chemical used in the dyeing process include 
dioxin a carcinogen and possible hormone disruptor. Toxic heavy metals such as chrome, copper, zinc, known carcinogens and formaldehyde a suspected carcinogen. So, uh, it is not only azo dyes, but azo dye related and processing chemicals are equally bad. Like for example, the dioxin mordant that is sometimes used with these dyes like the metal mordants made out of chromium, copper and zinc are also known carcinogens. And then there is a uh, fabric uh, processing chemical formaldehyde which is also a suspected carcinogen. Not only dyes, other processing chemicals are also harmful. So, we took a look that even other chemicals are also very harmful. In addition to the dyes themselves, the garment finishings are often equally as harmful. We will save discussion on garment finishes for another time, but just briefly they are used for creating wrinkle free stain resistance, flame retardants, anti-static, antifungal, antibacterial, odor resistance, permanent press and non-shrink fabrics. So, these are very special processing chemicals which are applied to the fabric. They can also be used as softening agents and for creating other easy care treatments. In fact, it is often the dye fixative used to bond the dye color to the fabric that causes the most of the problem. All of these can be particularly challenging for people with chemical sensitivities. You see, for it is from individual to individual that these dyes can have very uh, different effect. It may affect me, but it may not affect you. It may affect a, uh, a it may not affect uh, person B. But some of these processing chemicals also have highly toxic nature. What happens to azo dye? Why is it that it turns from a good uh, you know friendly uh, dye to a foe? That is because these azo dyes liberate amine on hydrolysis and because of the cleavage of the N double bond N, they, the problem begins. The discharge of highly colored synthetic dye effluent into inlands and coastal water is an environmental problem of growing concern. The azosynthetic dyes are extensively used in textile, paper printing, photography, pharmaceutical, food, cosmetics and other industries. Approximately 10,000 different dyes and pigments are used industrially and over 0.7 million tons of synthetic dyes are produced worldwide. So, you imagine that that is the kind of magnitude in which these dyes are produced and used. Azo dye consists of diazotized amine coupled to an amine or a phenol and contain one or more azo linkages. Azo linkages mean N double bond N containing chromophore. Azo dyes constitute 70 percent of the synthetic dyes produced and this is a detail that was uh, issued by E. Tard in 1997 and things must have gone up by now. It is a old data and they are second only by polymers in terms of new compounds submitted for registration in the US under the Toxic Substance Control Act. So, you see that they are already registered as toxic chemicals. What makes azo dye toxic? The azo dyes that are toxic only after reduction and cleavage of the azo linkage to give aromatic amines, mostly via intestinal and aerobic bacteria. The aromatic amines are metabolically oxidized to reactive electrophilic species that covalently bind the DNA. So, you see that how it kind of notoriously goes and attacks the DNA that is the genetic material of any cell of the body. 
azo dyes with structures containing free aromatic amine groups that can be metabolically oxidized without azo reduction. Azo dyes that may be activated via direct oxidation, the azo linkage to highly reactive electrophilic diazonium salts. So, either it can go through a reductive cleavage of the N double bond N or it can undergo some kind of an oxidation without reducing the azo bond and the third thing is that it may get activated by direct oxidation into a reactive electrophilic diazonium salt. So, these three things can happen under the cell condition and if these three things happen all three of them are very reactive species and they tend to attack the DNA. So, that is what makes azo dyes very toxic. Relationship of azo dye toxicity and structure. Let us try to understand how the structure and toxicity are related. The structures of azo dye that is the CI number food yellow and CI acid orange 7 showing their constituent aromatic amines are illustrated. Both compounds generate sulfonylic acid following azo bond reduction that is the decolorization, but different amino naphthols. The toxicity of acid orange 7 and food yellow were similar before reduction. However, after azo bond reduction, the toxicity of food yellow slightly decreased, but the, so to but the toxicity of acid orange 7 increased nearly 100 fold. Standard 1 amino 2 naphthol was very toxic compared with its sulfonated analog 1 amino 2 naphthol 6 sulfonate. The toxicity of sulfonylic acid was equivalent to that of unreduced dyes. Hence, the increased toxicity of acid orange 7 after reduction was probably due to the liberation of 1 amino 2 naphthol. The toxicity of naphthol compounds varied according to the type and position of their substitution groups. For example, naphthalene sulfonic acid was less toxic than one with the sulfonic acid when it occurs in the one position other than if it is at the two position. So, the toxicity also varies if it is one substituted sulfonic acid group is at the one position and the same sulfonic acid if it is at the two position the toxicity will vary. So, you see the main culprit in azo dye and the reduction of these two compounds that is the food yellow and the acid orange 7 has been because they both liberate different quantities of uh, 1 amino naphthol, 2 naphthol. But at the same time in the acid orange reduction there is a uh, another compound that is liberated and that is 1 amino 2 naphthol 6 sulfonate and that is what makes the orange uh, acid orange more toxic than the food yellow. Now, if we try to look at these structures, you see sulfonylic acid is a simple structure and it has a 1 amino 2 naphthol, but food yellow has substitution of sulfonic acid at the 6 position. So, therefore, it liberates these kind of compounds and, they, and so it is less toxic as compared to acid orange. So, these are the structural details and reactive black 5, if you see it has more sulfonic acid and it has vinyl sulfones. So, it makes it more and more toxic because the complexity and the uh, elect, uh, you know the electrophilic addition of these kind of cleaved moieties becomes more facile. 
Toxolo toxicological significance of azo dyes metabolism by human intestinal microbiota. Uh, Approximately 0.7 million tons of azo dyes are synthesized every year. Azo dyes are supposed uh, are composed of one or more R1 N double bond N R2 linkages. Studies have shown that both mammalian and microbial azo reductases cleave the azo bond of the dyes to form compounds that are potentially genotoxic. The human gastrointestinal tract harbors a diverse microbiota comprised of at least several thousands of such species. Both water soluble and water insoluble azo dyes can be reduced in intestinal bacteria. So, you see that they have such a wide spectrum of different types of intestinal microbiota that they are able to react with these azo dyes whether they are in the solubilized form or they are in the insoluble form. In either of the cases they are able to cleave this N double bond N and release one amino to naphthol. And that is the reason that this particular uh, azo dye is so susceptible for ox uh, oxidative re uh, or reductive cleavages. And this can be brought about in the human intestine by the microbial azo reductase. As the name suggest suggests, the enzyme that plays role is azo reductases. It is a class of enzyme which is present in the microbiota of the human intestine. Azoreductases, some of the metabolites produced by intestinal microbiota have been shown to be carcinogenic to humans, although the parent azodyes may not be classified as being carcinogenic. So, you see that only after the cleavage of that azo linkage that the primary amine that is released is what is the culprit. It is not the dye that is the culprit. Azoreductase activity is commonly found in intestinal bacteria. Three types of azoreductases have been characterized in bacteria. This particular lecture highlights how azo dyes are metabolized by intestinal bacteria mechanism of azo reduction and the potential contribution in the carcinogenesis, mutagenesis of the reduction of the azo dyes by intestinal microbiota. So, you see that we have at least understood so far that what makes the reactive dyes and particularly the azo dyes toxic. If we try to correlate with the structure of these azo dyes, there is one very common feature in all the azo dyes and that is the N double bond N linkage and it will have an aromatic ring on this side and it will have another aromatic ring uh, on this side and these rings will be further function uh, carrying many functional group or in other words now we can say they will be carrying oxochromes and they will contribute to the electronic effect into the rings. But these rings when they are sitting like this with the azo linkage are not so bad, are not so dangerous, are not so toxic. But once this N double bond N bond breaks or is reduced by the intestinal uh, uh, azo reductases, that is the time when they become dangerous compound. So, it, the dye itself is not dangerous. But when it is metabolized in the human body that is the intestine, then it starts uh, becoming more and more dangerous and so much so that, that it actually culminates in carcinogenicity or mutagenicity. So, that is what is to be understood very clearly. Acute toxicity factor, the acute toxicity of azo dyes as defined by the European Union criteria 
for classification of dangerous substances is rather low. Direct toxic levels of azo dyes will never be reached by consuming azo dye colored food. The majority of azo dyes, food as well as textile, have an LD50 values between 250 to 2000 milligram per kilogram body weight, indicating that for a lethal dose, many grams of azo dyes have to be consumed in a single dose. As azo dyes are highly water soluble, they do not accumulate in the body, but are metabolized in the liver and excreted in the urine. As azo dyes are very strong color, food normally are colored with dyes in levels of milligram dye per kilogram of the food. To reach a lethal dose, an average adult person thus needs to consume 100 kilogram of azo colored food in a single day. So, you, you now understand that at least the magnitude that it is not that if you consume azo dye, you will die. It is the slow release of these and over a period of time, these colored food which carry the azo dye are metabolized in the body and it is the metabolism which creates the toxic substance. So, if you consume uh, the, uh, a large quantity as large as 100 grams, 100 kilograms, only then there is a possibility that somebody may die. But because they have a slow effect, because they start attacking, attacking the cytoplasm and the nucleus of every cell in the abdomen and therefore, the you know toxicity is not visible immediately or the effect of the toxicity is not available or seen or observed immediately. Because the LD50 values are fairly low, it is only between 250 to 2000 milligram per kilogram of the body weight. So, you imagine that such low uh, is the LD value, therefore, it, it has to be noticed that on a long run it will create a havoc. It is not that it is as lethal as a poison that if you take this, you will die. So, it has a slow impact on the health. Azo dye toxic factor. Nevertheless, some azo dyes have been banned for food use due to toxic side effects. These are not due to the dye itself, but due to the degradation product of the dyes. As what I emphasized a while ago, the dye itself per se is not toxic, is not poisonous, but it is the breakdown or the metabolite or the metabol uh, or the uh, you know uh, hydrolyzed product or reducted product that is what makes it a toxic substance. The azo linkage is the most liable portion of an azo dye molecule and may easily undergo enzymatic breakdown in mammals including man. The azo linkage may be reduced and cleaved, resulting in the splitting of the molecule into two parts. This reaction is carried out by an enzyme known as the azo reductase. It is a non-specific enzyme found in various microorganisms which thrive in the intestinal uh, portion and they are called as intestinal bacteria and in all it is present in all the tested mammals. So, that is where if colored food and the food that has been colored with azo dye, although it is a food grade azo dye, when it is consumed by the mammals or man, it actually goes through the intestinal column and in the intestinal column resides these microbiota which contain azo reductases. And that is what creates the uh, havoc or that creates the degraded product of the azo dye and subsequently the releases the primary amine. Toxicity factor. In mammals, azo reductases are with different activities present in various organs like liver, kidney, lung, 
heart, brain, spleen and muscle tissues. The azoreductases of the liver followed by the uh, azoreductase of the kidneys possesses the greatest enzymatic activity. After cleavage of the azolinkage, the component aromatic amines are absorbed in the intestine and excreted in the urine. However, the polarity of the azodyes influences the metabolism and subsequently the excretion. Sulfonation of azodyes appears to decrease toxicity by enhancing urinary excretion of the dye and its metabolites. We also took a notice that you saw that in acid or in 7, there was no sulfonic acid group, whereas in food yellow, there was a sulfonic acid group. So, as and when a sulfonation is added to the aromatic rings of the either side of the azolinkages, that is where it reduces the toxicity and that has been observed very carefully. And not, how it has been observed that it also, you know, a lot of dye is uh, run out in the um, urine and therefore it is not assimilated in the body. Sulfonated dyes, mainly mono dye trisulfonated compounds are worldwide permitted for use in food, cosmetic as well as drugs for oral application. And therefore, it has been found that such dyes which have more of this SO3 group can be used for safely for food and cosmetic and drugs. As several of the degradation product of these dyes have been found to be mutagenic and carcinogenic and subsequently some dyes were no longer permitted as food dyes. So, it was found that over a period of time all the dyes, food dye uh, varieties that were available in the market, they were kind of properly um, investigated and those which were found to be more carcinogenic or mutagenic on animal studies were then banned from the food dye category. Food dyes are one of the most widely used dangerous additives while the European Union have recently placed regulations on labeling food dyes to inform consumers of the health risk, the United States has, not, uh, has no such requirement. But nevertheless, they are important and therefore, we should take a very serious look at it. Blue, brilliant blue, indigo carmine, citrus red, green, fast green that is, they have been used extensively in baked food, beverages, dessert, uh, candies and therefore, it is important that these uh, dyes which have been labeled uh, as dangerous dyes by European Union need to be taken into account very seriously. Other food dyes are erythrocene, allura red, tartrazine, sunset yellow. These also have been used, it was recognized in 1990 by FDA that is the Food Development Authority as a thyroid carcinogen in animals and is banned in cosmetic and externally applied drugs. So, erythrocene is no longer used because it was identified. Then Allura Red is most widely used and consumed dye. And therefore, it was found that you know it actually attacks the immune system of the mice. The studies were carried out and it creates hypersensitivity and allergy and therefore, it was also found to be dangerous. Similarly, tartrazine and sunset yellow, they have also been found to be toxic at a particular uh, you know threshold level. Therefore, because the studies were carried out only when these products were uh, brought into the market. Now, if you try to look at the structure of the tartarazine, although it has sulfonic acid groups, they, even then it is uh, somewhat dangerous because when this bond cleaves, this particular bond cleaves, that is the time when it actually is, um, uh, you know, releasing the primary amine 
and all the time the point of breaking is the azo linkage. Similarly, there, these are the structures of sunset yellow, azorubin and amaranth. I mentioned all these because these are some of the very popular dyes that are used in the food industry and they belong to the azo dye category and therefore, one should know that what is the kind of structure and what will it liberate after it, it, it hydrolyzes the N double bond N and therefore, it is important to understand the structural details of these dyes so that one can truly understand what is uh, you know dangerous for us. Now, what is the alternative to synthetic dyes? Safe use of natural dyes. So, what is the dye industry doing or rather innovators in the clothing industry who want to change the dye industry? Responsible dye manufacturers are investigating ways to treat their dye effluent with organic materials and bacteria rather than chemical treatment and improve dye manufacture and processing to minimize hazardous chemical used. In fact, I am excited to learn that natural plant based dyes are steadily making a comeback into the mainstream fashion because I personally work in that area. While natural dyes will never be able to completely replace synthetic dyes due to the fact that there is only so much land to go around and food is already in great demand. However, there are innovative ways of using plants for multiple purposes and maximizing their dyeing potential. And of course, if there was a little more love for the natural colors of fabrics, dyes would not be needed at all. So, you see that although there is a huge production of synthetic dyes, but people are now turning towards natural dyes. And the precise reason is that the natural dyes are biodegradative and they have at least a large number of them have not been found to be invasive on the DNA RNA material and therefore, they are safe in terms of their toxicity factor. But the kind of demand that the food industry or the clothing industry has in today's present population globally, it can never match the demand, but people are progressing towards the use of natural dyes because it is safer and because it is safer, it can be safely used not only for clothing, but also in, in food industry also. So, a lot of industrial people are now looking for natural alternatives for food dyeing. Thank you.